Oh my god, hey. I am going to be reviewing all eight shows from MT Fest UK, which is a festival of new musical theatre writing curated by Paul Taylor Mills in conjunction with the other Palace Theatre. Show number three was First Date. I'm talking about MT Fest, specifically First Date. This is a show that has already actually had a Broadway production. It was on Broadway a few years ago um, with Krista Rodriguez and Zachary Levi. I actually remember hearing about it at the time and um, listening to some of the songs from the show and watching some videos from the show and thinking that it was cute and it was fun um, and it was a nice Broadway summer filler show. So I was a bit surprised to see it in this festival because obviously it's already uh, reached Broadway levels of success. Um, but I was very interested to see any changes that had been made, how the show was being developed for a different audience. My overall takeaway from first date is kind of... Eh. It's tricky. I have a lot to say about this. The whole show and the success of the whole show hinges on the casting of the central two characters. They have to be likeable um, and well cast in a way that I feel for this performance, maybe not so much. And I'm going to talk about why that is. Um, Liam Doyle won me over by the end as this sort of awkward, nervous guy who has recently been left by his fiance and is going on uh, maybe his first date in a very long time. Sophie Isaacs, who is phenomenally talented, was sort of just completely miscast as the female lead. You've got this female character who is supposed to be edgy and a little bit abrasive and very guarded. Think Anna Kendrick in like all of her films. And Sophie Isaacs is this warm, bubbly, lovely personality um, who looks like a ray of sunshine and it just, she wasn't the right casting for that. She's very, very talented and sang the hell out of it and performed the role very well, but it didn't mesh right from the beginning. The whole conceit of the show is you have these characters who you can look at and see, oh, that's going to be an interesting mix um, because she's very edgy and young and hip and he comes in wearing a suit and is a little bit square and they immediately clash and their first impressions of each other are immediately wrong. You stand Sophie Isaacs and Liam Doyle next to each other and they just look perfect. They look like the little people you should put on top of the wedding cake. It's quite complicated music and it's hard to force lyrics onto music like that. It's almost like you have a clever comedy lyricist trying to write jokes to fit around Jason Robert Brown melodies. It's the two don't particularly go together. This is a music writer who doesn't write comedy songs. Russell Wilcox played uh, the narrator slash waiter slash a bunch of other people. Everyone else besides those two plays multiple roles in the show, which is really funny. Um, he did a great job. He had a fantastic song that in a full version of the show would definitely be a highlight. It was a highlight of the Taster preview that we saw. A lot of the other songs in the show are good and are catchy and the song Opportunity is funny. Uh, when she tells him that she's not Jewish and he starts hearing this demonic Hebrew chord, you think it's gonna be funny and then it's just... it wasn't very funny. Here's the thing, it's not a bad show, um, it just it shouldn't be described as this hilarious comedy show because that's not what it is. I think you need more adaptable character actors in the parts of the Friends. Here's what I'd do if I was producing this show. I would uh, send it somewhere like the Southwark Playhouse, somewhere off West End, a fringe venue um, where people might go to the theatre on a date. Yep, somewhere not obvious West End. And I would cast um, one of the Love Island alumni who can actually sing. There's a few of them floating around. Um, somebody like that. Two people who are completely charismatic. Uh, the lead actress needed to be more of a Natalie McQueen or a Kayleigh McKnight, uh, someone like that kind of a vibe. And we see the date evolving, it's very stoppy started, they have a lot of curveballs to deal with, where they sort of decide they're not interested anymore and then they decide to try harder and they're exploring things about themselves when we find out about their past. Um, the song that Liam Doyle sings near the end, um, where he confronts um, his ex fiance who left him at the altar, is really funny. I don't know if two characters in a musical called First Date is enough. It sort of feels like something you would maybe produce at the end of an hour-long improv session. It was... there was nothing really that remarkable about it. 
I think the reason that the TV show First Dates is really successful is because you fall in love with these characters and you find out about them and you root for them and you find out about their heartbreaks right off the bat, really early on. So this sort of gradual revelation in First Date the musical might be its disadvantages because we spend a lot of time watching these characters not really caring if they're going to get together and if you don't want them to get together, what is the point in watching the show? But I didn't hate it, I really didn't. There's a lot of things I like about it. I do like the structure of the show, where the ensemble play a lot of different roles. I think the structure of the show works well, the pacing of it works well. I just don't know if the plot at its core is interesting enough to hold an audience if it wasn't interesting enough for an hour-long preview performance. But that's just a first impression, and I could be totally wrong. That's a, that's a lyric from the show. I Thank you for watching my review of First Date at MT Fest. If you enjoyed this or want to see more videos of me vlogging backstage of shows that I'm doing, singing things, being generally... Yeah. Then subscribe to my channel. It's... Somewhere. It's somewhere.